so hit it. Hello and welcome to This is the Play Sports, the podcast. The Facer Boys here. Dirk, that's you. That's me. Good Austin, to be here, Austin. Yeah, We're yeah. here. We're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, let's do it. Um, so a lot of exciting things to talk about. It's kind of fun just sitting here, you and I. It's a lot easier than calling Jim Burton 15 minutes before we want to do a podcast and helping him, you know, we've got some good, we've got some good friends, but we did uh, put things together at the last second and uh, we're not good planners. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But welcome. I'm glad everyone's joined us this week and uh, we're excited to get after it. Yeah, let's do it. So first quarter, I think we've got to, we've got to talk college football, kind of a up and down week for college football here in the state. Wouldn't you say? Uh, yes. Uh, you know, not so good for the Utes, obviously, but, mm. uh, a big win for Utah State, and that, that ended in such a weird fashion, but uh, the Aggies aren't going to complain. Mm-hmm. And then BYU going up to Washington State, even though the coaching change and all that, that's a tough win. That was a good win for the Cougars. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I think one of the, the things that Cougar fans are certainly going to want to joke about is just how well BYU is playing against Pac-12 opponents. You know, Not to say Utah is playing poorly. They lost their you know just their first Pac-12 game this last week, but... BYU is undefeated in Pac-12 play so far this year. Of course, they're not in that conference, but still very good nevertheless, right? Yeah, they send a message, you know, and then they get a chance to play USC the last game of the year, see if they can put a bow on things. And the way USC is playing, uh, that's certainly not out of the realm of possibility. Yeah, I, I think I think it'll be kind of fun for BYU, especially if Jackson Dart, you know, makes an appearance in that game. I think they're, they're probably going to want to rub their uh, their faces in and whatever is going on in that game. Maybe Dart's going to want to show them, you know, yeah, I was a little out of your league anyway. Well, I think if Jackson Dart plays, that's a whole different ball game. You know, yeah. we'll see what happens if he comes back or if he just decides to wait um, and see what his future is. But uh, let's talk about the Utes. They're obviously, that was a surprise to go up to Corvallis and to get beat, and especially in the fashion they did. Yeah, I, th- I think I read they they were outscored twenty eight to seven in the second half, which uh, not good, not 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 yeah, exactly that, what they're looking for. Giving up a special teams touchdown that drives Kyle Whittingham crazy, but uh, you can't afford to do that on the road, especially in the Pac twelve. No, you really can't, and I think that's kind of been one of the things that's really been surprising the last year, maybe two years, is kind of the regression Utah's seen in in their special teams. Um, I think that started when, you know, Ben Lennon was uh, recruited to be the, the punter, the replacement for Mitch and didn't live up to expectations of being the third straight uh, great Aussie. You know, I don't, I, I think Britton Covey is the, you know, definitely the, wh- how you'd say just the, 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 the star player on special teams, but the rest of the rest of the unit does not seem to be doing very well. It, they don't tackle well. I think that's one of the big problems. No, it's different. And, you know, the game's evolved a little bit. You know, back when Urban Meyer was the coach, special teams became an emphasis. Mm-hmm. Kyle Whittingham continued that in his early years as head coach. And the game's shifting a little bit. And, you know, I heard an interview with Kyle Whittingham the other day where they asked him if defense wins championships. And he said, you know, and they were expecting him to say yes. But he says, you know, the game's evolved because offense is really important now. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, uh, special teams has always been an emphasis, especially under Urban Meyer kind of brought that to the forefront. Mm-hmm. Uh, as that gets de-emphasized a little bit, you can see where strong special teams can make a difference. Yeah. Now, it really does seem to change the whole tone of the game. If you can, you know, score a, a touchdown on a punt return or kick return, it does seem to be a huge momentum shift. I, I want to talk a little bit about that Utah State game because that was really crazy. That was Right. Any of that. that was a huge mismanagement by uh, whoever Colorado State's coach is. Yeah, you know, he was uh, trying to get them to spike the ball. The message didn't get from A to B. Uh, there was a little panic, a little, probably an assistant coach who got nervous and mm-hmm. rushed the uh, field goal unit out there. But uh, there wasn't one person in Logan wearing blue that was going to complain. That was a perfect scenario for Utah State to hold on and get that win. And that's a huge win for the Aggies. But mm-hmm. No, probably not totally deserved either. No. CSU helped them. No, I mean it doesn't matter. It still counts as a win in the in the standings. Um, you know, I, I let's of course mention BYU played really well. Tyler Algier had a, had another great, really nice game uh, against Washington State. Uh, Cougars are oh, that was really soft. Sorry, let's do the timer a little bit louder. So 
yeah, the Cougars are now, uh, you know, bowl eligible. They'll be going to the Mac and Cheese Bowl or whatever the heck it's called. What what, what game are they in? Independence Bowl. Independence Bowl. They were in the they were in the Fight Hunger Bowl for quite a bit, weren't they? But, uh, if, I don't know if that's still there. That's a shame. Yeah. Great name though, but yeah. uh, no, the Cougars played well, and uh, that's one good thing about that game in Pullman. The Cougars were guaranteed to win mm-hmm. and lose. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Two Cougars. Yeah, I like that. Here, I have this here. <laughs> Thank you very much, folks. Yeah. So we're here all night. <laughs> um, hey, let's go to quarter number two, Austin, the NFL craziness. What is with the Kansas City Chiefs? I don't know. Um, it, I'll, t- I'll tell you a perspective of a Chiefs fan, because when Sammy and I went to the grocery store this afternoon, there was a guy with, with a Patrick Mahomes jersey behind us in line. And I just, you know, kind of mentioned him, oh, r- rough game today, huh? He's like, yeah, you know, uttered a couple of obscenities and, you know, expressed his disappointment. And the thing he said that I thought was kind of interesting is like he he found it really odd how many commercials Patrick Mahomes has been in lately. Just he wondered if there was a connection between maybe working too much outside of, you know, the facility outside of the game and doing a little too much marketing and, and not being ready to play. Right now, he is the NFL interceptions leader. Well, actually, he's tied with Zach Wilson, nine interceptions on the air. Yeah, well, you know, you can say that um, all you want, but the Patrick Mahomes is not out there playing defense either. And that's Chiefs, a good point. Yeah, Chiefs are not playing defense very well. Not at all. No. And uh, you know, it maybe comes down to that tackling we talked about it earlier, mm-hmm. but something's wrong yeah, in Kansas they're City broken. because on paper that should be the team to beat easily. Yeah. And uh, and we had this talk a little earlier that uh, maybe the table set for Tampa Bay to do it again. It seems it, I don't. It just Tom Brady just creeps me out. It's just amazing how he just he just knows how to get ready for a game. He knows what to do in a game. He knows how to lead. He does. He know he doesn't necessarily need to be the most talented guy in the field, but he's the smartest. He's easily the smartest. Yeah, and I think yeah. that's a huge thing. Oh, well, and you know, it's kind of like a lot of teams. You know, Tampa is not the youngest team in the league. Mm-hmm. You know, adding guys like Richard Sherman and Gronk and mm-hmm. players like that. They, as an old guy, I can attest things start breaking and, you know, you don't uh, bounce back. As, yeah. yeah. You don't back, bounce back as fast as you did. So timing is going to be everything. I know Tom Brady's a freak of nature because mm-hmm. he's still playing in that. He has some but, kind of weird diet. I think, I think that's one of his big things. He, he eats oddly. But. Well, if he can get that uh, across to the other fellows and keep them uh, forever young, so to speak, mm-hmm. they've got a shot at it. But, you know, this could be a year where, uh, an up and coming team sneaks up there and wins it too. I mean, and uh, can you imagine if the Cardinals slipped in or even Cincinnati's in first place right now? Yeah, and, you know, and, and with all the turmoil off the field, people are forgetting the the Vegas Raiders are in first place in their division as well. Could you uh, imagine if Las Vegas were to be in the Super Bowl or you know, um, then you get a team like the Los Angeles Rams that on paper looks so very talented? And, yeah. A lot of people are big on, on, you know, San Francisco turning things around and that, but Arizona looks really good, obviously. Yeah, they, yeah. And, um, and the NFL is just hard to figure right now. We're in, we're in a competition uh, with some buddies, a uh, pickups contest mm-hmm. each week. And it was a disaster this week because it's hard to pick uh, winners when there's so many upsets. Yeah. I mean, who beat the Ravens? The Ravens had a bad, the Bengals, the Bengals. Yeah. And they're, they're, the Bengals are, I mentioned them. Yeah. They're in first place. Joey B is great. I love Joe Burrow. And I just want to, we want to point out to our listeners, the, the sound of the yapping behind us. Those are our two dogs playing upstairs. Uh, they like to play this game where they just yap at each other for an indefinite they amount of time. They're dinosaurs. They're, yeah. They're incredibly loud. So just enjoy that. The, the, you probably know them as uh, Mickey and Pluto from mix picks. Yes. We're not torturing them. They're just playing. They're playing as far as you know. <laughs> And, uh, but you know, the NFL is interesting. Zach Wilson was injured today, Austin, and uh-huh. that, uh, that'll be something to watch. And, uh, Taysom's that's still out with the concussion. Yeah. So, so. Our, our local flavor is getting a little, uh, less, uh, salivating, so to speak, less for the palate to watch. Uh, sure. Let's we just watch boring games. Let's go with that. Yeah. That was weird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let's take a halftime break to, to kind of let, I'm going to, I'm going to get a sip of, uh, our sponsor, Mountain Dew. Uh, they have a, they have a new Mountain Dew. It's an apple flavor. An apple We've been flavor. looking yeah, for it's it. It's kind of hard to find, but it's it's really good. But that that's uh, 
uh, Major Melon right there, which and, I really enjoy. And I'm just gonna do an old man stretch. Uh, Join me, will you? Let's sure. go. One side, one side. Okay. Okay. Let's we're limbered up. All right. Let's go into quarter three. Quarter three. We're gonna talk baseball. World Series. World we're Series. down to two teams. Uh, long live the Dodgers. They're gone. Yeah, which is satisfying and sad at the same time. Um, it, you know, it, here's here's a storyline that I don't think anybody's talking about yet. So the Red Sox traded Mookie Betts right for basically nothing to the Dodgers a couple of years ago. Right. They ended up going like they ended up advancing to the same level as the Dodgers. You know, in their first actual full length season since that trade, I believe. Right. I think that's kind of an underrated storyline. It's like. The Dodgers are paying so much money for these, you know, superstars, and they're not getting the ROI that they you think they would be. Well, it's only money, right? Sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think one of the other storylines is the fact that post pandemic, you know, your, America's pastime is trying to make a comeback. Mm -hmm. And the conspiracy theorists would say, oh, they're going to want a Boston Los Angeles World sure. Series because you got both coasts involved uh -huh. in that. And now we get kind of a Southeast uh, World Series, obviously, with Atlanta and Houston. If they really wanted TV ratings, they would have gone, they would have been Houston, LA for sure. But Boston, LA also makes sense, I think. Yeah, yeah you get Boston, you know, because even the Yankee fans would watch, tune in to watch yeah. the Rizzox. But, you know, you would think the coast to coast thing would be good for baseball. Mm -hmm. But you know what? This uh, It'll be interesting to see if the Atlanta Braves can get it done. I know there's a lot of residual hatred toward the Houston Astros for mm -hmm. the cheating scandal and that. And I know they'll have most of America's support. And I think a lot of people yeah. wanted to see, uh, see the Dodgers, uh, get a crack at the Astros because of what happened. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's, you know, we have the local tie with Dale Murphy and his mm -hmm. affiliation with the Braves. And I think, uh, anyone who's met Dale or knows Dale or knows of him, mm -hmm. You two have enjoyed a couple of uh, pleasant plane rides together. We believe, have. Right? When yeah. Jake played for the Utes, we used to fly on the wonderful, the wonderful folks at Southwest Airlines. Amazing that you and Dale Murphy sat in the same section on an airplane. That's well, you know, <laughs> first class on Southwest really is uh, who gets on first, right? Right. So right. We, yeah. We get on, but he uh, just a wonderful, nice guy, and uh, because of Dale Murphy, I'm cheering for the Atlanta Braves, and the fact that the Houston Astros. In my eyes, are a bunch. You know, the organization cheated a few years back. Mm -hmm. I have, I'm having a hard time forgiving them. And I mean, what was the? I mean, I'm trying to. I, their punishment was what the manager got fired, got sus suspended for a year, and then right. fired. Right. Big big deal. That that banner is still up in their stadium. Yeah. And they still, uh, they're still the same cast of characters, pretty much. Yeah. You know, they didn't really punish them. They no, didn't I, have any last play seasons to no, they, think they, about they, things. They, they learned nothing. There was no, you know, lessons learned from that. You know, they, they learned to got to hide things a little better. Yeah. Under the they, uniforms. But. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, oh my gosh. But, but, you know, I think baseball, that's one thing about baseball. Baseball's had these controversies over the years and it keeps coming back. Yeah. And, um, and I think the fact that the Atlanta Braves, um, you know, and heck, look at their nickname. They're still playing ball. You know, yeah. This politically incorrect uh, name, perhaps. Um, uh, they're just still playing. And I think America is going to rally behind Atlanta because of Houston's background. Yeah. You know, I'm always amazed when I like run into like people. Who, I'm, I'm 29 for, for our listeners, you know, who are curious about how old I'm I am. Not. Yeah, that's true. But I'm always amazed when I go out like in the world and I see like people who are younger than me who are like really into baseball, you know, who, you know, they know what the, the daily lineups are. They know the pitching rotation. You know, there are definitely some people who really love baseball still, for sure. Well, and then we're long suffering Seattle Mariners fans, the only franchise never to make it to the World Series. And true. We're waiting yet another year. Yeah, that's not going to happen. And I'm not really optimistic about next season either. <laughs> so yeah. We'll see. They did come a little closer this year. One game but, away. Yeah. Well, from getting the playoffs, but who knows what egg they would have laid when they got there. You mm -hmm. know, you, you never know. But uh well, so let's jump to the fourth quarter. I think, from what I understand, mm -hmm. we have a professional basketball team here in Salt Lake City. Yeah, the Salt Lake City Stars. The Stars. Yeah, Blade they drafted uh, Dwayne Wade's son. That was pretty pretty exciting. I can't wait for the opener. But uh -huh. how about that other team, the Utah Jazz? Oh, yeah. Last year, the best record in the NBA. This year, off to a 2-0 start. 
Rudy Gobert is rebounding like a madman right now. He looks awesome. I I think this just too far as in two games so far into the year. I think he looks really good. The way I love the way he's moving his feet. You know, he's covering just massive amounts of floor on defense. Um, like he's like you mentioned. You know, he's a, been a tenacious rebounder. I think he's gotten. 20 or close to 20 rebounds in both of those games. Leads the NBA. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, by, a, by a long shot. Absolutely. I think like right now, he's definitely the most important player on the Jazz. I've thought that for a while that he was the most important player on the team, but he, now he's clearly the best. As we haven't really seen Donovan, you know, get cooking yet. So here's a, here's a stat for you. Okay. I know you're a shooting guy. You like shooting. Donovan Mitchell so far this year, shooting just 35% from the floor. Uh, he did have 27 points, though game high in, in the win over mm-hmm. but he uh, had, I, think, I believe he had to take tw- over 20 shots together right. yeah. and that's kind of maybe the kind of guy he is you know mm-hmm. he's going to need to get a lot of his shots but the jazz are a better team when donovan mitchell gets a lot of shots yeah and rudy bear gobert gets a lot of rebounds yeah and the thing about gobert too also is he's putting the ball in the basket too oh yeah for sure and you know there were times last year where i think he'd get you know four or five shots the whole game uh-huh and they can't win with that. That mm-hmm. makes him irrelevant. No, they really, he needs the Rudy, go, the, the pick and roll with Gobert at the top of the key with either Mitchell as the ball handler or Ingles or even Clarkson is, is really the Jazz's bread and butter play where they can either hit Gobert on the roll. He's unstoppable. You can't, he's not, you can't jump, you can't out jump Rudy Gobert. Or you can kick it out to the corner and find like Boyan Bogdanovich. That's the Jazz's bread, bread and butter play. By the way, I do that play every time. You probably notice when we play NBA 2K. Have you noticed that? I uh, I just noticed I get drilled, but other than that, you did pretty good today. You hung in there pretty well. Getting better for an old guy, but yeah. now the Jazz, the Jazz are figuring it out. But I think one bottom line is they've got to keep Rudy Gobert relevant on the floor because a lot of teams don't have a weapon like Rudy Gobert, and so yeah. the uh, number one you know way to attack the Jazz is neutralize him. Mm-hmm. Then suddenly the Jazz look like a lot of other NBA teams. Yeah, that was what the Clippers did in the postseason. They they found a way to to get rid of Gobert's impact. And yeah, I think you're right. They're gonna Snyder's trick is gonna have to be keeping him in the game as as much as possible. Yeah, and that won't be you know that's not gonna be easy. And then you know some of the other guys are getting a little older and longer in the tooth. But by, by the way, uh, I don't get that expression. The the teeth lengthen with age i just imagine uh from the flintstones saber tooth tigers with their big long teeth well that they're old the older they get the is that where the expression comes from that's where i pull it from see but. my see what i imagine is like you're like te- like you, either your gums like you know start to recede into your head or just it's not all about recession Austin. it could be uh they're just you get long roots okay it, it's it's a weird expression I, yeah. I just think it's kind of weird but but and then uh just looking at the nba in general too it's interesting that the warriors are off to such a good start mm-hmm. steph curry um you know they get clay thompson back a lot of uh pundits think that that's gonna be a team to reckon with in the west and and the train wreck that is the la lakers is kind of fun to watch too it is yeah i it's interesting that the Lakers built that team and com- completely forgot where the NBA has been the last few years, you know, where they, I don't think the Lakers, we were talking about this other than LeBron, who's taking the majority of their three pointers. They don't have a volume perimeter shooter. And right. I, I don't, I don't think you can win in 2021 without a guy who is a legit threat to, to hit a three every time down he's there down the floor. That's true. And, uh, and I think LeBron's, uh, it's the word cocky would have to think that he can do anything on the floor, even at his advanced age. They don't want him shooting 10 three pointers a game. That that would be insane. Yeah. That, but I think he would th- I think he feels comfortable doing it if they need him to. They're but, they're gonna find out by December that plan's not gonna work. But, you know, it's, it's so weird because um I never liked Tom Brady until he became an old man. Mm. And I'm starting to like LeBron more that he's an old man. I like the old guys that play ball because uh I've never heard of some of these young guys uh, and I played that video game with you and I, I see, hear these names and I see them on sports center and mm-hmm. I, Oh, okay. That guy oh. plays for Phoenix. I didn't know that. Yeah, so, yeah. so we're learning, but uh, it'll be an interesting year in the NBA and the jazz, obviously after two and no starts, we'll see if they can keep that up. Go jazz. Go. All right. Well, Hey, that's uh, that's our four quarters of discussion guys. 
Uh, before we get to our parting shots, um, just want to remind you that we are collecting uh, emails for weekly contests and updates. So uh, yeah, I'm going to put a link to website. the uh, to the emails where you, where you subscribe. Um, we're not going to send you like anything dumb. It's just, it's just to collect um, entries for our uh, podcast drawing. There's some, there's some Amway uh, representatives that'll probably contact you. Yeah, and- Mary Kay has also reached out about the email list, but we need to get it to a certain number first. Yeah, um, we get the list. We can sell it, make some money. So that's. Uh-huh. Uh, now, what we're trying to do is build our audience, and we're going to have weekly contests. We have some. Uh, we still have a bunch of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We got some, you know, some, some scar- gear. It's getting colder. You're going to want a scarf. We're going to start using these bad boys if we don't give them away. And yeah. Austin's got dibs on this one. Good. Look just, at this. It's all look, wrapped uh, up in my yeah, microphone. This is, a, this is a microphone Hello? disaster. There we go. Okay. So see us with that cougar one on mm-hmm. the Utah one's shiny. You could it's walk a, it's around. A, uh-huh, it's 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 a feat. I would say. You wear this bad boy on 13th East, you're gonna get noticed. Oh, in That's, traffic, yeah, you can walk out to traffic and be just fine with that. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we'll do that. So those are a few housekeeping things. We'll get to go on. I probably should have waited to the end, but yeah, uh, that's all right. Hey, well, well, let's just get to your parting shot. What's your parting shot then? I'm gonna I'm gonna defer to you for oh, a minute okay. while yeah. I. Uh, formulate mine a little stronger okay cool well mine is going to be um you know if you if you know us and you've heard us talk you know we're obviously big seattle sports fans uh you know we mentioned the mariners um big night in seattle this last week uh the kraken played their first ever home game at climate pledge arena formerly the key arena stupid arena name stupid hockey name but i'm glad they have hockey back in i here's where here's where i hockey is back in seattle nhl's back in seattle for the first time in like 80 years or something i think is what i that's a that's a guess i'm guessing it's like well, 80 the seattle years. metropolitans yes. were stanley cup champions yeah in like list. the 1920s or something yeah so see it, it, there is a little bit of hockey history in seattle this isn't completely new to them but you know i one of my really good friends uh, works in the for the NHL. He uh, does their uh, Instagram social media content. Told me it was an in- incredible atmosphere. Um, you know, if you look at the pictures, um, a lot of the Seahawks players were there. Macklemore, who I know you're a big fan of, was there. That's a great fish. Is that what you're talking about? The fish, yeah. Macklemore. Man, yeah, ex- yeah. There's a fish in a hockey jersey there. Um, but uh, y- yeah, no. Russell Wilson, his wife were there. Bobby Wagner, Utah State great, was there wearing a Kraken jersey. I love the Kraken's look, by the way. And yeah, it was just, it was cool. It, it, I think the Seattle Kraken are going to be really good for sports. Well, you know, it's back. I know ESPN was excited to broadcast the first mm-hmm. game up there and uh, it is good to have it back. Now if we can get basketball back there, you get the Seattle Supersonics, Which back. is very possible. Yeah. Um, you know, rumors, speculation is the, the new, the two front runners for expansion in the NBA are Las Vegas and Seattle. Mm-hmm. And uh, that'll be interesting to, to see how the landscape changes, because if you look at it right now, geographically, us, I mean, the Memphis Grizzlies are in the Western Conference, mm-hmm. which is and the, Tennessee is not very West. I don't know. No. If people knew, yeah. And plus, that's an up and coming team. So it wouldn't be wouldn't be bad for the Jazz to see them less shift to the east. Yeah, I would bit. agree. Yeah. But uh, hey, my parting shot is uh, just simply uh, a perspective thing, guys. You know, I think. Uh, a lot of times in sports, uh, we get bunched up, especially maybe World Series time when our favorite team doesn't make it the World Series. And guess what? It's just a game. It doesn't matter. We're just enjoying it. It's for entertainment. Uh, you know, I've had the opportunity to spend a lot of my life covering games and going to games. And in all honesty, when I look back on things, the, the events I remember most, I remember Sammy uh, holding a trophy uh, at a gymnastics meet in St. George. That was funny. She grabbed the trophy like she had uh, won the score. We, we love Sammy, but to be honest, she was not a particularly uh, huge contributor on that team. She was new to gymnastics at the time. Yeah. But when they handed the trophy to the team, she grabbed it and put it above her head like this. That was one of my favorite memories. And then when Austin won uh, Pee Wee State Hockey Championships, how proud I was sitting in the stands of both those events. Uh, those are the things I remember. I don't remember so much uh, these, you know, whether my favorite team made it here or made it there. I do remember when uh, Richard Sherman knocked the ball away and the Seahawks got to that go to the cool. Super Bowl. Yeah. That was a cool moment. 
But, you know, bottom line, guys, is sports is to be enjoyed at all levels. And my parting shot is let's keep it in perspective. And let's remember it's entertainment. It's fun. It's goofy. Uh, God, I've got so much sports crap around that. It's stunning. Just, I love it. You know, mm-hmm. and, I, and I'm a, I'm a pack rat, but uh, you know what? It, it can't be your central focus of your life. You can't live and die with your team. You can, uh, you can enjoy the ups and downs, but uh, you know, when they're down, like we've been down with our Mariners, mm-hmm. they ever win the world series. We're going to remember all those years and, mm-hmm. and it's going to make it that much more fun, but uh, sure. it's not going to determine whether we're happy people or not. You know, it's yeah, just, if our happiness was dependent on the Mariner season, we would be the most miserable people on earth exactly. easily. Yeah. Sports is just for fun. So guys, keep it in perspective. We encourage you to go to this is the place sports.com. Um, Podcasts on Apple, Spotify, other places, I think. Um, and it's all about fun and, and good journalism. And, uh, and uh, you know, we joke about how uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, we get some of our friends here to join us on the podcast. And we'll do that. We're lucky, us. We both have a lot of good friends in the media. I would agree. They've been great to us. And we'll bring them aboard. But for now, uh, we're here to this week and we're enjoying it. And we're going to be with you all the time. And just come to our website and, uh, and hey, don't uh, be shy about advertising either. We, we do need to we find do have that, way we to have that space. Money. Yeah. Yeah. We'd like to make some money on that. Just yeah. We have, we have that space. If you want to advertise on the podcast as well, just shoot us an email. We'd be, you can find our emails pretty easily on the website. So, you know, the business license costs like 3850. Yeah. We got to cover that. Yeah. We're, like we're, to we're, cover in, that. we're in the whole 3850 for this. So if we, if anybody could help us, that'd be great. That'll work out and uh, maybe cut back a Slurpee a week or something mm-hmm. and uh, put your business on there and then we'll all grow together. But uh, us, thanks for joining us on the podcast as Happy usual. Great host. And uh, should we do the thumbs up? Let's do the thumbs up. Hey, 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 we'll see you next time. Thank you.